Well, we want to look at one more cataract surgery and take a look at some of the nuances with this one compared to others that we've seen previously. And important, this is just an imprint. This will be gone by tomorrow, so it's literally just a little indentation on the epithelium, but it stays long enough so that I can perform a capsule rexis of that size. This is viscoelastic, followed by the main opening with a keratome that is about 2.4 millimeters. That's at least the width. Capsorexis. One of my favorite parts to watch is this part, the capsulorexis. I don't know why, but that red reflex and just seeing it peel off manually in almost a perfect circle as you're pulling that off of the front of the, yes. the capsule. Hours, hours, hours of practice. I think <laughs> we reviewed, somebody asked me how many I've done, and I think I'm close to 10,000 now, and it took a long time to get it just right. But I think we also, I hear a lot of questions on laser cystic cataract surgery, and there are certain things that it's better at. I should say more certain features are correct. It's more reproducible, more precise capsulorexis, but it doesn't have any impact on the outcomes, meaning the final vision, the final refractive outcome is not affected whether you do manual or laser. This is breaking apart the actual cataract now to get it prepared for the fake emulsification and pulling it out. The first part was a very thin fluid, a BSS solution. It was a um, hydrodissection, and now we're going into more of the manual spinning and rotating of that lens to get it prepared to remove. And sped up this little denser cataract. I wasn't able to get as good of a separation with my first approach, so I use a different one. And these little pieces as they come out are then broken up by the tip here, and then fluid is, comes out of these side ports immediately cooling and also replacing the volume so that there's no compression or decrease in size of the anterior chamber. I like the analogy you used previously for that jackhammer of that fake emulsification unit, just breaking it apart and now pulling it through there. The fine vibration might be better, otherwise people get concerned. It's like, jackhammer? No, there's no jackhammer inside Fair. the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> fine. Fine vibration. Fine vibration. Term. Let's stick with that one. <laughs> with these fine vib vibrations, you're seeing the rest of that cataract coming out and polishing the inside of the capsule, getting it ready for where the new lens is going to be placed and provide the patient with good vision. And here again, polishing the posterior capsule, you see some folds forming and then another curette to remove as much of the opacity as I can to make it as clear as I can before the new lens goes in on both sides. And then more viscoelastic is placed to create space for the new lens to go in. And that is the lens, what we're seeing. I'll pause for a moment and have you take a look and tell me, is that a one piece or a three piece? And as you see it unfold, you can tell it is a one piece. One piece. I will. All the same color, all made out of one piece, acrylic, hydrophobic acrylic, and then a second instrument to position the lens. These haptics, this is a Zeiss lens. Uh, this one goes up, the other one goes down. So it's a little different fold than what you see on others, but it unfolds just nicely and goes into the envelope where it's supposed to be. How selective can you be in the selection of an IOL? I know there's material, There's is there a different size? Of course there's IOL power for the correction of the eye. Uh, brand, size Alcon, BNL, anyway, there's a few. Um, then the material, the most commonly used are hydrophilic, acrylic, hydrophobic acrylic, and silicone, PMMA, less used. And then the lens design, meaning what are the optics like? What is the power, which comes usually in half diopters. There's only one company that does quarter and then what the optic is designed to do. Multifocal, monofocal, toric, we'll discuss that another time as well. Now I have to ask you one more question. At the end of this video, I noticed this little hairline line right there. To me, I'm assuming that's the capsule being stretched just a little bit, is that correct? So the capsule, the normal lens is about nine by four millimeters if you take the biggest dimensions diameter versus um, thickness. The new lens is maybe half to one millimeter and six millimeter in the optic. The little fold here is the connection, if you imagine the haptics out here. So haptic goes in this direction and then in this direction. And so puts the capsule in that specific longitude under a little bit more stress and creates a fold that will go away in the long run as the capsule shrink wraps around the new lens to keep it in place. And I think that's something we can see in post-ops, you know, one day, one week, even at a month, we can see those little almost stretch lines of the capsule there. So not uncommon and we can see it right here at the time of surgery.